Seven. Cricket. It's not just a game, it's something more. This story, the history of Australian cricket, tells us exactly why this is, as it sets us off on a journey like no other. The game of cricket was introduced to Australia in the late 18th century. However, the game had been played for years upon years before that time, with the English introducing the game to North America, the West Indies and India in the early stages of the 18th century. By the 19th century, New Zealand and South Africa had found a grip on the game, and cricket was a well-known sport, despite it only being played within the countries themselves. But the first international match ever played was between Australia and England in 1877. It was played in Melbourne, Australia, and the English 11 made their way over by boat to take part in a two test match series to be held at the MCG. A test match is the oldest and most traditional form of cricket, known universally for the full white playing outfits. But that first ever test match was won by Australia by a narrow 45 runs. But England squared up the series, however, with a four wicket win in the second test. This is where international cricket history began, on our very own precious land in Australia. Cricket is one of the very few sports where the governing principles are referred to as laws rather than rules or regulations. The Maribone Cricket Club, also known as the MCC, the English Cricketing Board, are the board responsible for writing and interpreting the laws. There are 42 laws that make up the laws of cricket. The time between the 1930s and 40s is known as the Bradman era, named after Australia's most successful and talented cricketer of all time, Sir Donald Bradman. But just prior to the Bradman era, a world suffering crisis was at hand. World War I was upon Australia and men aged over 18 were required to enrol to fight for their country. As for the Australian cricketers, 210 first class players were known to have joined, 34 of whom were killed. The Sheffield Shield was contested up until 1915, being suspended because of the war. Four years later, the competition recommenced to begin the 1919-20 season. Sir Donald Bradman, cricket's most renowned player, raised in Borrell, New South Wales as a young boy when he found his talent in cricket. The famous golf ball and stump routine was the starting point of his incredible hand-eye coordination hitting the little ball up against a water tank in his backyard with a single cricket stump. He made his way into the Australian Test 11 in 1928 when he played in his first test against England. Despite being dropped for the second test, he was recalled for the remaining three tests, scoring his first hundred in his fourth international innings. Bradman played a total of 52 test matches for Australia before famously ending his extraordinary career with a duck, leaving the game with an average of 99.94, still the highest standing average by any player in the game. Bradman made cricket history on his first tour of England in 1930. As a boy, not yet uh, past his very early 20s, he scored 974 test runs in that series. He seemed to, to fill all the necessary attributes and requirements of being a great batsman. And then he had a few extra things as well, plus a very healthy appetite for runs from what I can gather. Don Bradman was the greatest cricketer I ever saw. And I would say that he had the greatest repertoire of aggressive, damaging strokes that ever a batsman uh, carried. In fact, I am 
quite certain he, he was the best cricketer ever to walk onto a cricket ground in any part of the whole wide world. The Ashes, the most fought after trophy in the game of cricket. It may be small, but this tiny urn carries more tradition, heritage and legacy than any other sporting trophy in the world. Ever since 1882, this urn has been the centre of attention for Australian and English cricketers. The rivalry that has been built over time around this remarkable artefact has never been so strong, with the two nations desperately fighting to retain it. Every two years, the urn is played for in the most epic fashion, held in either England or Australia in a five test series. In 2012, England hold the Ashes after defeating Australia 3-1 away from home during the 2010-11 Ashes series. However, previous to England's reign, Australia were the dominant side, holding the Ashes for a 16 year period from 1989 to 2005, the longest period of supremacy in Ashes history. England won back the Ashes in 2005 after a long wait in a series which has been deemed the greatest Ashes series of all time. But the Aussies refused to be deterred, whitewashing the English 5-0 in a transcendent display on their home soil in 06 07. You know, the one thing I'd say about the, an Ashes series is it doesn't matter whether it's home or away, you either win and you're a hero or you lose and you're a villain. It's as simple as that. We've described it as a holy grail and I think it is for English English teams that it, it's what you're remembered for. Of the 310 Ashes Test matches played, Australia have won 123 ahead of England's 100, along with 87 being drawn. The most runs scored in Ashes cricket have been made by Sir Donald Bradman, with a huge 5,028 runs, while the leading Ashes wicket taker is with no surprise Shane Warne, with 195 Ashes wickets. Since you're probably seven, eight years of age, it's don't let the Poms win anything, they can't win. They, and I suppose all through me growing up, I, I saw Australia basically win the Ashes just about every time. 66 series have been played, 31 won by Australia and 30 by England, while the remaining five have been drawn. I think the real key to the Ashes is that it's a five test series. It's a bit like an opera or a Shakespeare tragedy or something in that it's, it's in five acts. And so in that time, you can see all sorts of mental torture of the players as they go through different kinds of situations. Bowlers getting on top of batsmen, batsmen getting on top of bowlers. And you see that reflected throughout the five test series. In 1976, Kerry Packer, owner at the time of Consolidated Press and the Nine Network, approached the Australian Cricket Board seeking exclusive rights to broadcast the cricket on Channel 9. Despite offering a mind-boggling $1.5 million, the board made a firm rejection. So Packer decided to come up with a plan to get what he wanted, what the players wanted, and what the game of cricket desperately needed. We are purists and uh, the traditions of the game are very important to us, but um, from the playing side, um, what, I, what I respected was the blokes that had gone before us had passed on to us the tradition of Australian cricket. It wasn't the Australian Cricket Board that had created the tradition of Australian cricket, it was the players. And you know, they had passed on a very healthy game and um, you know, great tradition of Australian cricket to us. And I thought it was very important that we pass that on to the next generation. Uh, but I also had the realisation that something was wrong. There was an imbalance here and if the players didn't stand up at some stage or other, there would be nothing to pass on. Kerry Packer was ready to give international cricket a renovation secretly signing a total of 55 players from Australia, the West Indies and the world to play in a competition named World Series Cricket. This was kept as one of the biggest secrets of all time 
But eventually, when the cricketing boards found out, a huge uproar was made in the media about Packer. The fact that those 50 odd players kept it quiet for so long, kept it a secret for so long, I think that gives you a clue as to how pissed off the players were with the treatment they were getting from the administrators, not just in Australia, but around the cricket world. However, Packer was determined to work with the boards and arranged a meeting in London with the ICC, the MCC and other boards involved to search for a compromise. Though no progress was made as Packer's offer was turned down once more, leaving Packer no choice but to take them all on. I was willing to withdraw from the scene and leave the running of cricket to the board. We are not taking no steps now to help anyone. Well, look, look, every man for himself and the devil take the whole house. World Series cricket failed to take off in its early stages, with the official test match played in Brisbane at the same time, featuring the weakened Australian team in India, attracted far more spectators than the first World Series cricket match at VFL Park. The nation believed that World Series cricket was just an exhibition. That was until an Andy Roberts bouncer at David Hook's head gave a lot of those believers a realisation of how legitimate this competition really was. But it was the spectacle of lights that caught the attention of the public as Packer lit up the SCG on the 28th of November 1978 to present the first ever internationally staged match under lights. Yes, it's a magnificent sight, Richie. People are just waiting for the sun to go down to really capture this atmosphere. And it certainly is an historical night here. It really is fantastic sight. And people queuing up outside, trying to get into the ground. And then all of a sudden, like some sort of miracle, like a dream come true, World Series cricket was a success. In 1999 was the second time Australia had won the ICC World Cup, but the first time they had done it without losing a match. This was the starting point of an era of invincibility. That's in the air, should be taken. The World Cup for Australia. In 2003, Australia travelled to South Africa and yet again won the World Cup without losing a match. They made every challenge seem easy, including a colossal 2 for 359 in the final against India. The Caribbean in 2007 was shaping up to be a real challenge. With Australia coming off a series loss in New Zealand, they were still looking to go back to back to back. Once again, Australia proved to the world that they were more than just a good team, but that they were simply invincible. 29 matches without a loss in World Cups, a record that no other team has ever achieved. To win back to back to back World Cups, particularly two under Ricky Ponting, that, that's special. And um, in, in subsequent years he's shown that he is a fantastic leader and getting better and better with his tactical mouse uh, on the cricket field. However, 2011 wasn't as successful. Despite stretching their unbeaten streak to 34, they made it no further than the quarter-finals, where they lost by five wickets to India, who went on to win the World Cup on their home soil. Today, cricket is unlike what it was 20 years ago, let alone 10. The sport has developed immensely into one of the world's most popular sports alongside soccer. Ever since World Series cricket, money has influenced the game, luring new sponsors and advertisers into it. But it has now become a family friendly game, rather than the old traditional gentleman's game, as it is now enjoyed by both boys and girls of all ages around the world 
led by the fans' new favourite form, 2020 Cricket. 2020 Cricket originated in England in 2003 as a domestic county competition. It made its way onto the international stage in 2005 when Australia and New Zealand faced off in Auckland in their country's retro 70s kits to celebrate the start of a new exciting era in cricket. While the cricketing craze swept the globe, millions of dollars were beginning to be spent into creating new competitions such as the IPL, the Champions League and in Australia the Big Bash League. And as 2020 cricket has been so successful with the fans, it even has its own World Cup, which has been most recently won by the West Indies in 2012. Oh, the UDRS is another new addition to cricket, which has enabled us to view the game from a completely different angle. The UDRS, short for Umpire Decision Review System, is a technology-based system which can alter decisions made by the on-field umpires if incorrect. Since it was introduced in 2009, players have had the choice to use the system during matches if they believe that a field umpire has made a mistake. The third umpire is then required to watch multiple replays from different camera angles to determine whether the call was correct or incorrect. The three pieces of technology that assist with determining the decision are Hawkeye, Hotspot and the Snickometer. And finally, Cricket Australia and Milo have worked together for the last 21 years to run a program called Milo Into Cricket, formerly known as Have A Go and Kanga Cricket. Milo Into Cricket is a program developed for young boys and girls between ages 8 to 12 to get involved in cricket, learning skills and having fun along the way. So as you can see, Cricket in Australia has changed incredibly since the first test in 1877. And since then, we have witnessed the greatness of Sir Donald Bradman, the birth of the Ashes, the evolution of Kerry Packer's World Series Cricket, the development of 2020 Cricket, and the successes of the Australian Cricket Team. Cricket in Australia, and today history continues to be made.